Hi, my name is Jeremy Langay. I'm the uh, product manager for ERA. Um, I'd like to take a minute and, uh, and walk you through one of the cool new features that was released in ERA 1.3, which is the ability to roll back and recover SQL Server databases and failure scripts. So when we think about recovering and restoring databases, such as the SQL Server environment, we're really thinking about one of two key restoration use cases. The first use case is really just a, a situation where you may want to take a database and make bring up a copy of that database side by side with the original on the same server or on a different server. And once that's in place, you may want to go ahead and, um, and uh, do a low level comparison. Um, if you find any missing data, maybe um, export some data from the uh, the new copy that you've stood up and then um, import it back into the original environment. So it's not, not so much a rollback of, of the, the source prod environment um, so much as surgically going in and making changes to the data set. And that's actually uh, uh, pretty common for most EDAs to do that sort of recovery because any actual rollback of the actual database server itself can be very disruptive because you know time is money and just losing a few minutes worth of transactions can you know for some organizations can result in hundreds of thousands of dollars of lost revenue and so uh, uh, from a, a nutanix perspective we're supporting both of these use cases now uh, the traditional uh, duplication of data can be done through the cloning capabilities which uh, you've probably seen in, in other examples of era um, you know that's something where you would go to a time machine for a given database select a time window and then choose to clone it and then drop the clone onto maybe the same database server or a different database server. But what I want to describe for you today is how we can use the new in-place restore capability. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is the database in question. It's called uh, MS SQL 2. And uh, this particular database has been online for about six days. Um, it's, uh, it's got about a, a terabyte and a half of disk allocated to the, the database, and then the data in size is fairly small right now. Um, it has an SLA of uh, two days of continuous data recovery, seven days of weekly snapshots, and then we're retaining uh, weekly snapshots and monthly snapshots and quarterly snapshots for, for a little while after. This is also a fully managed environment, so it's you know defined by software profile, it's sitting on a particular network, uh, it's tied to a particular Active Directory domain, and in particular, this database environment is uh, um, has a HammerDB uh, workbench uh, uh, workload running against it, so it's generating transactions into a transactional system. Uh, so this is the the database in question, and uh, and the system is hammered right now. Um, I, I have uh, I intentionally created a database server where the uh, it's got fairly low resource resources, and so. Um, um, it's being hammered, and you can see that it's constantly writing in data. So if I go ahead and do a query the top uh, uh, top uh, records with a timestamp from a orders table, um, after uh, a couple of seconds, you'll see a list, and you'll see that it's basically up to the second. So I'll give that just a second here to come back. All right, so 20 seconds later, uh, we we can see that the most recent record was added at 3:28, which is um, the exact current time right here. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the system, and let's let's assume that something drastic happened. Let's assume that uh, I'm a DBA. I came in and I said, "Hey, wow, this is cool. Here's my tables. Uh, oh, what am I doing? Oh no, I'm deleting my customer table. It's just gone. I've just lost the data. This query is going to fail." customer data is destroyed. I lost the data at 329. So how do what do I do? What do I do to recover? With ERA, this is actually a very simple operation to bring the database back to just before that failure occurred. So I'm going to go back to ERA and go to this database in question, and we're going to look at the time machine. And the, the time machine for this particular database uh, has been backing up data um, all the way up to um, just about uh, 522, and you can see the current time is, you know, or sorry, uh, uh, <laughs> 322, and the current time is 329. So there's actually about seven minutes worth of missed data. And based on the schedule for the log backups, uh, the next backup of that database server by era is going to be 
you know, 353. And so, um, so we've already, we already have a down environment and we have um, a gap of about seven minutes worth of data that's not captured in the backup. So how do we recover the system back to its failure point or just before the failure point? Uh, this is where we have the magic of error. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and, and choose to restore this database. And by doing a restore, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually tell ERA to scrape through the logs on the running database server. And if it finds any database logs, combine them with the known backup in the time machine and create a union of the two. And so I'm gonna do this. It's gonna put the database into, uh, into restoring mode and it's gonna start scraping for those logs. Um, the first part of that is to really uh, process any, any identified logs. And once it finds those logs, it'll combine that into and effectively extend the backup in the time machine. If you had a, uh, a larger, more systemic failure, such as you've lost the database server, you've lost the disks, you know, the file system is wiped, things like that, then you're talking about just recovering from the, the backup SLA that had been defined at the time machine. But if, the, if it's just a fat fingering event, if there's data corruption, and you just want to recover to just before that, then you can actually use ERA to capture these running logs from the system and combine that with the known backup. And, and by doing so, you have the ability to, to basically roll the system back to just before your corruption event. So this will take a, just a, a minute or two. All right, we're done. So it's gonna take me back to that original view. And what you'll see is that it has extended the time machine now to show the most current time. So the time machine has been extended. So even though we didn't have a backup going, we've actually captured, we took the existing backups that were based on transaction logs, and then we did a redo log backup, or, or excuse me, a tell log backup for that last seven minutes of data. So now what I can do is I can go in and I can say, you know, I want to recover to just before I had that failure, right? So let's, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and um, um, take an example here. Let's go ahead and uh, first off, just look at where we had our failure. So we had uh, our last known good state before we deleted that table was 328, right? So we want to recover to 328, right? Just before that table is wiped. So if I go too far, if I go to here, then I'm gonna end up restoring a database with that missing table. I go to 328 and, and in particular, uh, if we look at the, we can see this is 328 and 50 seconds. So let's actually recover down to the second here. We're gonna recover exactly to that transaction, that last transaction that was recorded, okay? All right, so I'm gonna choose that point in time and I'm gonna to choose to restore back to the original location and then kick off the restore. Now, well, what's interesting in the era model is that when we talk about a restore, if, um, if we're able, uh, we will parse through and look at the location of database files on a given disk. And if it's the only disk used by that database, we'll actually swap out the disks rather than restoring the database files. And what that does is that allows for the restore process to be really, really fast even for multi-terabyte database environments. So this is a one and a half terabyte environment. And I'm, as you see here, I'm gonna end up restoring this thing and the whole thing's gonna be done in a matter of minutes. So um, let's go ahead and do, let's just choose the original location and I'll click the restore button. This will uh, kick off an operation to do the restore, like such. You'll see it, it'll go through a couple of phases. Um, on average, this may take maybe eight to 10 minutes, somewhere in that range, depends on the, on the hardware. I'm, I'm running this on a lab environment with a fairly low end hardware. Uh, but, and obviously it, it depends on the, the spec and resources you've allocated. So I have a, a database server with a single virtual machine, a single vCPU and eight GB of RAM. So that, that can definitely, you know, constrain how quickly it can do restores. But even in that case, it's restoring one and a half terabytes in about eight minutes. So this will take a few minutes. Um, you'll notice that it's gonna go through a process of, 
of finding uh, the uh, point of data from the time machine. Um, and then what it's going to do is it's going to unmount the disks uh, from that, uh, that prod environment, the original disk for that database, and then create thin, writable new disks from the time machine back up, and then replay the logs right up to that, 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 um, that time right before I, I accidentally wiped out the customer table. So this will take uh, just a few minutes. Uh, while that's going, if I go back to SQL Server Management Studio and just do a quick refresh in here, um, you can see in here that um, it shows that this database is in restoring mode. So it's offline right now because we're in the process of recovering it and bringing it back online to that previous point in time. And then this is the old query result. So once we've done the restore, then I'll run this command again and show you where we are with, with the updated uh, table. But uh, right now, as you remember, before we did this restore, we were, we ac I accidentally deleted the customer table. All right, we're uh, pretty far ahead. Um, it's only been a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, we're in the process of recovering the database right now, which means we're literally in the process of replaying logs right now to bring it up to that failure, uh, that failure point. We've already detached and attached the necessary disks um, and, and brought those into the system. Um, the, the, that final recovery, uh, the time can take, uh, it, it varies depending on how many logs you're processing and how much, pro you know, and also the system. In my case, it's not that much, right? So this whole thing is getting done <laughs> just in a, literally a matter of two or three minutes. And I haven't sped anything up. You can see the timestamps here. The last bit of data is just to update error with the updated information about the, the state, the current state of the database. So in fact, the database has already been recovered on the SQL Server side. Uh, we're just updating. So it says we're done. So it says it's completely done. It's been rolled back. So let's actually go to that database in question. We'll do a uh, refresh here and uh, look at that database. And I can see that my customer table is back. Awesome. All the data is there. So let's rerun this query again and let's see if it lands in the exact same spot it was before that failure. just shy of that 50, right? This is the last transaction before that 50 seconds into the 28th minute. So there you go. Hopefully this gives you a really good uh, overview. This is a new capability that came in era 1.3 for SQL Server and for Oracle. And we have uh, future plans to roll this out for other database engines in, in, in the not too distant future. Thank you very much.